Today you'll learn not just how to use your phone as a webcam, but also how to do it entirely for free without any downloads or installations. I'll show you three different tools, how they work, even from your local park, nowhere near your house. And most importantly, I'll show you how to add ridiculous Snapchat filters because who doesn't want to look like an old balding man or a toddler live on the internet? The three options we're using today are called Video Ninja, Epoch Cam and Epoch Cam Pro. I've also had my crack team of professional creators test out these tools alongside me. So you know you're getting the best of the best. Now, really quickly, there are a lot of great things you can do with a phone as a webcam. But there are some major issues you should know that people rarely talk about. So stick around to the end of the video for that. And of course, you'll probably need an overlay for your new fancy camera. So let's do a giveaway. Phone.tv has given me dozens of vouchers to give out. These work alongside their global sales, which I'm pretty sure they have a Christmas one going on right now, which means you can grab pretty much any of their overlay packs, graphics, banners, you name it, for pretty much free or for just a few dollars. They have both animated overlays, alerts, and more for your stream, but they also have static overlays that take up less your PC resources, meaning you can let your resources focus on encoding your stream and making your gameplay smooth. I'm giving these away in the comments. All you have to do to enter is type hashtag owned giveaway and then what graphics you'd pick up. Maybe an overlay, some sub badges. Just let me know in your comment and then I'll pick the winners and let them know in a few days. Massive thank you to Own for sponsoring the video. If you want to support me guys, check out them with the link in the description and enter the giveaway so I can give back to you guys. Now back to the video. First, let's cover Video Ninja. This is an entirely web-based tool and it's entirely free. To use it, you're going to get your streaming PC and your phone. Then on your streaming PC, open a browser and go to video.ninja linked in the description. You're going to be met with a few options. For today, just click create a room, type in a super secret room name and password. And then if you want a specific video codec, pick that or leave it on default. Once that's done, click join as director. Now you're met with a few options again. It says invite guests, capture group scene. It has guests down here, but we're going to click copy link on the invite guest. Then we're going to message that to ourselves via email, discord, just something you can access from your phone. Then you'll open your phone, go to message, copy that link and paste it into your phone's browser. From there, you can join the room with your camera and give it permission to use said camera. Then click start and it should appear on the website on your streaming PC where guest one was. Now to add this to your stream, you'll go to OBS or if you're using a different tool like Streamlabs, you'll go there and you'll click add source, add browser source, copy the link from the capture group scene into the browser source, set the resolution to 1920 by 1080, click refresh scene when active, control audio via OBS, and then click save. And it should all appear inside OBS now. But I will quickly say a note that's very important is if you're using the wrong lens, or if your video is coming out vertical, go back to your phone and turn it horizontally or make it landscape, and then click these little arrows to swap between your other camera lenses. I want to say this tool is kind of amazing. When Nick tested this on his Wi-Fi, he had absolutely zero delay wirelessly, and that is comparing his webcam. I saw similar results as well. It's practically flawless. Now this service actually supports four guests. So technically you could have four different people use their phones to webcam in for say a podcast or whatever you need. Myself and the lovely Jack Buzz I found, we could literally go five streets away to the local park and send our phone camera back to OBS at our house. It was a little bit laggy, of course, because we're out and about and we're using mobile data, but that's also because we live in Australia and any country with better internet than us will be totally fine. Now that's how you do this for free with absolutely no downloads installations, but I kind of hate the Video Ninja browser on my phone. It's small and weird and clunky. So instead, you can actually use their app on both Apple and Android. Go to the App Store, search Video Ninja, download the official app, and when it's done, open it, select your camera. I am choosing the front, but you can pick whatever. Click the link here, and you should be able to copy it to send from your phone to your PC, whether that's through Discord or email, doesn't matter, but once it's over on your PC, grab it, and just like before, copy it into OBS with 1920 by 1080, refresh on active scenes, and control audio via OBS. And that should work and the app seems much faster and much cleaner. I will say the quality of Video Ninja will always be determined by how good your connection is. But you can also edit the browser source links we're using to increase your bitrate and get a higher quality if your connection can handle it. Bitrate being the amount of data you're transmitting. So click the OBS browser source and at the end type end bitrate equals 6000. This will set your bitrate to 6000, which is roughly what you'll need for 1080p. At the end of the day though, if you have a slow connection, it might end up just being a bit blurry or having a delay. That is just part of using a wireless connection as a camera. But luckily the next tool can be either wireless 
or plug directly into your PC. Epoch Cam is a tool by Elgato and there are two versions. Sadly, this is only for Apple. I know, it sucks. And if you're happy with Video Ninja or you're an Android user, then you can use the time code below to skip ahead to the part where I point out some massive downsides with using your phone as a webcam. For the rest of you though, what are the differences between Epoch Cam and Epoch Cam Pro? Well, one of them is free and one of them is paid. You can tell the difference because the paid one adds that neat little pro to the name. See, quite cute, isn't it? It's not super expensive. It's a once-off purchase of between eight to $13 redos roughly. And if you decide to use the free version, the drawbacks are limiting the quality to 480p, they add a watermark, and you can't pick the camera lens or control the camera settings. At least you still get your Snapchat filters though, so that's kind of neat. Those are the differences. The actual setup and use is the exact same, so let's get into that. First, go ahead and search up Epoch Cam on the App Store. Grab either the free or the paid version. Doesn't matter, they'll work the same for this. Then on your streaming PC, you'll download the Elgato Camera Hub. I'll link it in the description. Once you have them both downloaded, make sure your phone and your streaming PC are connected to the same network. Open the app on your phone and open Camera Hub on your streaming PC and let the phone app start searching for your PC. On Camera Hub, click the drop down on the device and click Epoch Cam. Did it work? Congratulations! Did it not work? Yeah, me neither. Nothing I do will make this work wirelessly and Elgato's support documentation is really out of date because they integrated their Epoch Cam PC software into Camera Hub but then didn't update the documentation, I guess. I did everything I could from this entire thread and nothing. So instead, I got this giant iPhone cable and installed iTunes from PC so that it can recognize my iPhone. You don't need iTunes open or running at all. You just need it installed so that your iPhone can be recognized on your PC. So keep Epoch Cam open on your phone, keep Camera Hub open and plug in your phone. Then ta-da, if you've got cable or auto selected in the app connections, it will work. Now let's go through some settings before I show you the Snapchat filters, because honestly, the fact Epoch Cam unlocks your entire camera settings is amazing. I would say this makes the pro version pretty much worth it. Well, you know, if you're okay with a cable, because apparently wireless doesn't work. First, we have lens. This gives you the option to pick between your phone camera lenses. Below that is bitrate, so it's the data you are transferring. Since I'm cabled, I'm at high and then flash is pretty self-explanatory. It's a flash or your torch. Let's skip AR lenses for now and come back to those because we have the frame section. This is your zoom or your field of vision. You can drag this up and then change where you're zooming into or just click the blue box and drag it around. You'll also see presets below, which just let you quickly swap to different frames that they've built in. Next is focus. You can leave this on automatic and the camera will prioritize your face or if you want, change it to manual and you can actually set a specific focus distance. This is great for if you're using your phone as a second camera to shoot maybe top down or something else and you really need it to actually focus on something specific and not just the background. Picture controls are next. Personally, I don't use these. If you push these even slightly too far, it makes the image look far, far worse than it should just naturally. But if you do, just make sure your contrast balances out the brightness because otherwise it will wash your image out. Next, we have exposure. This is really important for most streamers. If you sit in dark rooms with just yourself lit, your phone will likely try to adjust the exposure to be digitally brighter. You do not want this. So you can turn automatic off and change the shutter speed and ISO manually. Shutter speed has a nice rule of thumb to be double your FPS. So 30 FPS means a shutter speed of 1 60th. You can increase this, but the higher it goes, the less light you're letting in, but also the less motion blur. And as humans, we really like our blur when it's doubled the FPS, which is why that's our rule of thumb. ISO is a very complex topic, but in short, this will digitally alter your image's brightness or really how the sensors handle light. Lower ISO is less light, higher ISO is more light. But if you increase the ISO too high, you'll actually degrade the image because it has to work really hard to brighten it all up, which adds noise and gross artifacting. I will link a video in the description about webcams and lighting for you if you need help with your lighting. Next up is white balance. This is something everyone gets wrong, usually because they leave it on automatic or have mixed light temperatures in their scene. Essentially, the lights you use to light yourself or your scene have a temperature. My Elgato key lights are 4700 Kelvin right now, so I will set my white balance to match that at 4700. If you don't light yourself with the appropriate color temperatures or you mess up your white balance, you end up with really orange, green, purple, or just looking a little bit gross. For me, I look a little bit weird right now because I actually have my curtains open to let a lot of light in so I can actually show you what my phone will look like as a webcam. I didn't want to do it in the dark. And once you're done, click save at the top and well, you're done, sort of. Now you need to add this to OBS. Head to OBS, click Add Sources, click Video Capture Device, and select Elgato Virtual Cam. Now you can either leave this as device defaults, or if you want, select Custom and change this around. But look, default is fine. So let's hurry up and set up Snapchat filters. And then after doing all this work, cover why using your phone as a webcam kind of sucks ass. So we're using Epoch Cam to add these Snapchat filters. So connect everything as I showed you earlier, and then go to the settings and click AR lenses. And well, 
That's it. Now you just pick what you want to add. You, you can make me bald. If you want, you can click the effects tab and install the NVIDIA AI or AR kits. Just there'll be a little warning that you can click and then just download the version for your GPU. And you can use these to add AI backgrounds or this kind of scary, weird effect where it edits your eyes to always be looking at the lens, which apparently never works for me. It doesn't recognize my eyes. But why shouldn't you use your phone? What are the issues? Well, for starters, most of you don't have brand new phones with amazing cameras and those that do, I don't know if you want it being tied up for hours on end, unable to receive messages, calls, you get the idea. But if you are okay with that, well, also please be aware that this is gonna make your phone hot, like really hot. Using Epoch Cam for 30 minutes plugged in made my phone hot to touch. And if it is too hot, well, it can actually cause long-term damage to your battery. Another major issue is delay. Even plugged in, I tend to get major delays on Epoch Cam, meaning if I use a microphone on my PC, such as this one, I'll need to then add a delay to this microphone so it syncs up with the delayed camera feed. Video Ninja weirdly had much less delay, almost none, but it depended on the individual's internet. I had more delay than say Nick did, for example. I think using a phone is best done for a secondary camera, a top-down shot for unboxing or hand cams, a side angle for cutaways, or for going walkabout midstream. You might get higher quality from your phone, but the drawbacks are important to know, and that's why I still prefer using a webcam like the Logitech C922. And if you want to learn more about how I set mine up, click right here.